in the wild. Speed is an asset. Hunters use it to ambush. Others in silent attack. The fastest animals on the planet use speed to kill. High-speed cameras and a detailed study of anatomy reveal how they do it. In the desert, the sun is your ultimate enemy, but overcoming searing heat and thirst is just the beginning. Predators here strike with fascinating bursts of speed. A world of action is hiding in the blink of an eye. In Namibia's ancient desert, temperatures soar to 55 degrees. And yet, unique creatures have conquered these searing dunes. In the wilderness, you're either quick or you're dead. The annual rainfall index is less than an inch. But in reality, it just never rains. So predators here have to rely on their prey for moisture. And in such an open environment, speed isn't a bonus. It's a necessity. The shovel-snouted lizard is one of the fastest on the dunes. But being fast isn't as easy as it looks. Clever adaptation is essential for speed in this environment. The faster you move, the faster you sink into the sand. But the shovel-snouted lizard can run at a meter per second. For her size, that's amazing speed. 20 times her body length in one second. Long hind legs are driven by powerful thigh muscles that work like an engine. The rear stride length is much longer than the front. So it runs on only two legs instead of four, using the front legs to steer. But it's the foot structure that makes all the difference. The back foot's large area is a paddle that pushes the body forward, while long tendons act like springs, adding ride height. It uses this speed to kill. Prey provides the lizard with all the energy and liquid it needs. But its challenges go beyond just food and water. It's hot. Hot as Hades. The sand can reach 60 degrees. So the lizard does a dance to release heat. Its feet would cook, so it gives each one a break. But this tactic has its limits. It's time to find a cooler spot. The flattened snout is the perfect wedge for a sand dive. The nostrils are set back, so sand doesn't enter the nasal cavity. Strong forearms clear the way forward, while the powerful hind legs kick sand to the side, swimming the lizard to a cooler safe zone. The lizard can remain buried 45 centimeters down for 24 hours. It's also a good way to escape predators.
These dunes aren't exactly crawling with life, so all potential prey needs to be investigated. But not all opportunities are what they seem. This snake can travel at speeds of almost 30 kilometers per hour. Only the black mamba is faster. This is the Peringue's adder, also known as the sidewinder. Sidewinding is the equivalent of the horse's gallop in the snake world. It's the fastest way to get around. It's also the best way for a snake to cross loose, shifting sand. In sidewinding, only two parts of the snake are on the ground simultaneously. With a head and tail firmly anchored, it throws its body forward in a loop. Then the head is thrust forward. As soon as that lands, the tail is brought up, and so on. This movement is like a foot pushing down, allowing the snake to move forward without sliding, even on shifting sand. Sidewinding also cools the snake. It reduces the body's contact with the hot sand, much like the thermal dance does for the shovel-snouted lizard. Sidewinder doesn't use the speed to chase down prey. The lizards are just too fast. Instead, the snake sets up an ambush. Although snakes don't have ear openings, they can hear vibrations via two specialized bones in the skull. When prey is close, a burst of muscle activity generates tension between the ribs. The elastic recoil propels the head and fangs forwards at tremendous speed. A shovel-snouted lizard arrives on the scene. He stops to pick up a moth. Big mistake. In the scorched desert, the lizard is not just a meal, but an important source of water, too. Sixty kilometers away, the dunes meet the icy Atlantic Ocean, creating the skeleton coast. 
Almost everything has abandoned this coastline. Even humans. Now it's just a town of ghosts. The brown hyena is the only large predator that survives here. And their only competitors are black-backed jackals. At dawn, the scorched desert gets lighter, but even meaner. And there are six-legged tigers on the prowl in these mean streets. The temperature soars. Only the hardest survive. In this frontier town, it's not only about how fast you can run, it's about how quick you can draw your weapon. The tiger beetle has evolved supersized jaws for a killer bite, even for much bigger prey. Fights are often to the death here, even against their own kind. At over six centimeters long, these are the world's largest tiger beetles, by a long shot. Some tiger beetle species can run at two meters per second. For its size, that's the equivalent of a human running at 900 kilometers per hour. But when two tiger beetles clash, it's the size of the jaws that counts. It's over in seconds. But slowed down, the fight becomes a gruesome spectacle. The massive mandibles resemble a scimitar, but with a torturous addition of dagger-like spikes. They open to 180 degrees and overlap when closed, so they can take on large prey items with crushing force. But unlike a hunt in a fight, it's not over quite so fast. Strong armor covers their body, protecting the soft organs inside. This exoskeleton is made from chitin, a stronger version of keratin, the same substance that human fingernails, rhino horns, and horses' hooves are made from. Even the massive mandibles can't pierce it. But there's a chink in the armor. These plates have joints. Like wrestlers, each tries to gain the upper hand. The threat to his territory must be eliminated. A bite to the neck, and it's all over. The mandibles penetrate between the thorax and abdomen, and the crushing force severs the nervous system. Death follows swiftly. Fog from the cold Atlantic. The whole town is enveloped like it never existed. But the fog doesn't make it far inland. It's just too hot. In the first dune fields, there's a surprising visitor. Normally a hunter of the open plains, this big cat ventures onto the sand out of desperation.
Summer has come and gone, and still no rain has fallen. This isn't the savanna, but the spotted cat is surprisingly well adapted to conditions in the dunes. The cheetah may be the fastest land mammal, but few have seen it operating in conditions as tough as these. Great springbok herds would graze on these plains after summer rains, but there's not a springbok in sight. Cheetahs are surprisingly efficient in soft sand. They spread their toes wide for better balance and traction. The large surface area of the paws and ridged footpads allow them to push against the sand rather than sinking in, thus maintaining acceleration. Sweat glands between the pads, the only sweat glands a cheetah has, go some way to shedding heat. But it's still hot work. Every effort raises body temperature. It's already 32 degrees. The cheetah has to shed excess heat now. New research shows that the vertebral venous plexus, a system of veins between the shoulder blades, is much more extensive than in any other cat. In times of heat stress, there is an increase of blood flow to this area. So while panting cools blood around the mouth and tongue, the cheetah's back serves as a radiator that allows for convection, radiation, and evaporation, rapidly shedding heat that would otherwise be fatal. The delicate balance between overheating and speed is pushed to the edge in the desert, and there's nowhere to hide. Then he spots something. He can't reach 100 kilometers per hour in the soft sand, but he's at full power. It's a mouse. In a time of plenty, it would be a mere plaything, but in the scorched desert, it's a great prize. Enough hunts like this, and he may survive until the springbok return. The Namib Desert is over 45 million years old. The sand dunes at 300 meters are some of the biggest in the world. Towering, barren barriers. And yet home to more unusual residents. This is a chameleon with a difference. It lives on the ground. And it's the world's fastest. It needs to be. It's got one eye out for predators, while the other is searching for prey. No trees, no shade, no water. This chameleon has to have a plan to beat the heat if it's to survive. 
exposed sand and baking sun. It's a death trap. But the Namaqua chameleon is a desert veteran. Its toes are fused to form glove-like feet, perfect for climbing tufts of grass to escape the heat. But the toes can also spread, and like snowshoes, they provide a bigger surface area to prevent the chameleon from sinking down, while claws provide grip. A fast pursuit is key to finding prey and avoiding roasted feet. But despite all this complex engineering, this chameleon can't stay out on the sand all day. It's got to find a cooler spot. Fast. This dung beetle is the perfect protein snack. But right now, the chameleon has other priorities. Like surviving for another day. It must escape the sun or find a way to beat it. By changing color, the chameleon can control its body temperature. Layers of color cells, or chromatophores, are wired to the nervous system and constantly respond to temperature. If the chameleon wants to warm up, its body sends a signal to these cells, which turn a darker color, allowing the skin to absorb heat. When the chameleon wants to cool down, the cells become lighter, reflecting the sun's energy, cooling the chameleon. but the sun is still winning. If the chameleon doesn't cool, he'll dehydrate and die. He has to get off the ground. When the sun loses its edge, it's time to hunt. This is one of the dune's fastest creatures. But this darkling beetle is also food. Catching it is the ultimate challenge. It's so fast, its legs are invisible. It can cover 50 times its own body length in a second. That's 10 times the relative speed of an Olympic sprinter. This may be the world's fastest chameleon, but it's eating the beetle's dust. Large hind legs and long femurs give the beetle power and a long stride. Legs spin faster than the eye can see. Long tarsi, or feet, push off the ground and lift the beetle above the hot sand while its speed creates cooling headwinds. It's very difficult to catch. The chameleon's legs don't move as fast, but it has something up its sleeve. The complex muscular tongue shoots out of the mouth at top speed, while a bulbous, sticky end targets the prey. It leaves the mouth as a bullet shape, but muscles cup the tip as it hits home. The cup fastens around the prey, creating a suction effect, guaranteeing one more meal. And any extra fat reserves are stored in the base of its tail in anticipation of tough times ahead. In a fraction of a second, the tables are turned. But the chameleon isn't hunting alone. A new predator arrives. 
the chameleon's not keen to share his beetle bounty. But the caracal is desperate. The scorched desert is a tough hunting ground. Luckily for the chameleon, the caracal has picked up a different kind of scent. Her finely tuned senses are fired up. Humans have only six ear muscles, but each caracal ear is controlled by 20. They can move and tilt the ears independently. Three main muscular groups work separately. The superior raises the ear. The posterior moves the ear outwards and back and the cervico lowers the ear downwards. Large ear dishes capture sound waves and direct them into the ear canal. Its ear canals are proportionately longer than those of humans and dogs and are far more sensitive to sound. But there's not much viable prey around. She's wasting valuable energy. A different hunting strategy is needed, and fast. She ventures out of her comfort zone and onto the lowland plains. Surface water is a luxury in the Namib. But Namakwa sand grouse have a secret supply system. These birds are the long-haul jets of the desert. They will fly 150 kilometers for water. With a cruising speed of 80 kilometers an hour, they can fly the width of the Namib desert just to refuel. With over a year of no rain, animals are clutching to a thin lifeline. But thanks to an incredible adaptation, male sand grouse can carry water home to their chicks in their very own cargo hold. These birds are equipped with special belly feathers, which have thousands of tiny filaments that act like a sponge. When the feathers are dunked, water is absorbed into the spaces between each filament. The sand grouse can carry half a teaspoon of water at a time, liquid cargo they'll take back to the nest. Evaporation is fast, but their top flying speeds ensure a successful delivery to thirsty chicks. The sand grouse are also the perfect lure for a hungry caracal. but they've perfected the art of the speedy getaway. Long pointed wing feathers give the sand grouse a powerful 12 inch wingspan. The wing is much longer than it is wide, which provides a large vertical lift area, great for a quick takeoff. The caracal makes a beeline for the sand grouse's waterhole. The shy cat is rarely active in the day. But in the harsh desert, predators don't stick to mealtimes. She knows that where there's water, there's prey. She may be slight, but she's got a secret weapon. off. The sand grouse are airborne, but she's not done yet.
muscle-bound hind legs act like powerful twin engines to propel the caracal two meters into the air. Strong shoulder joints swipe long forelegs in wide arcs, while her splayed paw with inch-long claws increases the chance of an impact. A supple spine with 30 vertebrae, six more than humans, can adjust during freefall, meaning the caracal almost always lands upright. And a cartilage buffer system is essential for landing without injuring her secret weapons. Another miss. The sand grouse are off. But greater forces are about to give this caracal a lucky break. It's been 14 months without rain. Few animals are active in this desperate period. But change is in the air. A flock of sociable weavers are getting ready to breed. The water hole has kept them alive so far, but they're being watched. She has to rely on camouflage and cover to get as close as possible. A silent ambush is key. The caracal's feet are designed for a surprise attack. The fur between her foot pads consists of stiff hairs providing muffled footfalls. This allows her to get within meters of prey before triggering the alarm. She's off. Caracal's powerful hind legs and fine-tuned reflexes make her agile. The powerful slap has injured the weaver. But meals don't come easily in the desert. It's over in seconds. Thanks to her streamlined speed and agility, she can finally enjoy a meal. The few lucky weavers that escaped the caracal's claws have completed their nest building. But someone else has been following their progress. Speed is the Cape Cobra's obvious trump card. Whatever prey he does find in the desert will struggle to sidestep his lightning strike at a cool two meters per second. But this is his stealthy approach. Rough bark gives good grip, leading him to the scent of helpless chicks. But it's not as simple as it seems. Sociable weavers build the largest nests in the world, and each is home to hundreds of breeding birds. 
This haystack apartment block consists of countless separate nest tunnels. But it's built like a fortress. The entrances face the ground, making it almost impossible for predators to get in. The weavers won't risk their lives fighting off the intruder. The cobra's too quick for that. But its speed is compromised by this obstacle course. Its scales are smooth and streamlined, and it's struggling to get purchase under the nest. There's a weak point. Food is all around, but the problem is getting it. The backup plan is length and strength. The cobra anchors a coil in one empty nest while stretching into another. But not all the chambers are occupied. A forked tongue works overtime, picking up scents. The giant nest is a complex maze. He scents a chick nearby. Potent venom paralyzes and kills the chick in seconds. Exhausted, he falls to the ground. The weaver was a tasty appetizer, but now the cobra is in search of his main course. A maze of underground burrows on the desert plains are home to hundreds of African ground squirrels. Today, the squirrels are on the Cape Cobra's menu. But these feisty rodents have had their fair share of snake attacks, and they're not about to drop their guard. The cobra has blown its cover. Squirrel colonies usually work together to fend off predators. But this female has decided to go it alone. fluffs her tail to appear bigger. It distracts the cobra and shields her body from the snake's strikes. Sharp teeth deliver a quick bite to its tail. The cobra's strike would kill her in minutes. confidence takes a hit as she struck. But it's just a blade of grass. It's a reality check. She needs to back down. The action has caught the attention of a far meaner neighbor. The squirrels lost her nerve. But lucky for her, this yellow mongoose comes to the rescue. Snakes to the mongoose are like peanuts to the squirrel.
This is when the cobra will use his speed. They are each other's prey, but they're also deadly opponents. The mongoose circles, waiting for a weakness. A quick strike needs a Matrix-style getaway. It's a battle of speed. The cobra tries intimidation, but it's not enough. Sooner or later, there's got to be contact. It's a winning blow. He's been spared from becoming Mongoose Dinner. The mongoose is immune to a certain quantity of the cobra's venom, but right now, he's not hungry enough to push those limits. The heat is loosening its grip. This could be a turning point for the desert's inhabitants. But it's an isolated storm and only quenches the desert's thirst for a few short days. But the moisture has signaled the start of a termite hatch. For some, it's a change of fortune, a feast. Winged termites head out to start new colonies. But around the nest, workers have a busy schedule. They only surface to forage when conditions are perfect, and the hint of rain has triggered a harvest. Powerful jaws snip dry grass and drag it back for stockpiling. They must work fast. Termites are near the bottom of the food chain. But a predator is already at work. A termite-eating spider is setting up shop, burying itself in preparation. In the blink of an eye, the spider bursts out of hiding. It's not by chance that it knows exactly when the termites leave the nest. The spider waits beneath the sand, upside down, so the feet and mouth are at the ready. Vibrations from the prey are picked up by CT, hair-like projections on the mouthparts and feet. This is a trigger to approaching prey. The extra long hind legs push off the sand with great leverage, launching the spider out of hiding. Speed is key. If one termite spots the spider, it'll emit a warning pheromone, instructing the colony to bunker down. So the spider needs to be on the termite before he's seen. Extreme speed makes this possible. The spider handles the termite with its forelimbs, assessing whether it's a plump enough meal. Hooked fangs pierce the carapace. A fatal bite behind the head.
termite is immobilized before it can raise the alarm. But some fight back. This is a soldier termite, bigger than the rest. But it's no match for the speedy spider. It'll kill up to 20 termites in one hunt. And it stashes them under the sand in a custom-built larder. After paralyzing its prey, the spider weaves an underground sack around the termite. The spider's legs don't stick to its own web, but it's like glue to anything else. The spider will store dead termites here for weeks before they're finally eaten. Alarm bells are ringing. The workers scurry for cover. The spider's hunt is over. But he manages one last kill. The desert surrounding the storm's footprint is bone dry again. It's what the animals have been waiting for. But for some, it's too little, too late. The rainy season didn't deliver, and the dry season is going to be unbearable. But the storm has thrown a lifeline. It's filled a small pan or clay depression. The only water for miles. Springbok arrive. And other herds materialize out of the mirage. The sand grouse arrive en masse to refuel. But this water has a price. The cheetah finally sees the springbok. A pale, chanting goshawk eyes the sand grouse flocks. Prey will disappear with the water, so predators have to be quick. The goshawk makes a move. But the sand grouse haven't loaded up yet. The goshawk attacks. and the cheetah heads in for the kill. The desert hunters have evolved incredible abilities to strike at speed. But their prey, as out of necessity, developed extraordinarily speedy getaways. But if the past is anything to go by, the desert hunters won't go hungry for long.